Well, my brother, sort of thanks for you all coming along. It's a full house tonight. I think we've just about got the maximum amount we can squeeze in. Mm. And um, this talk tonight is called Lost Streets of Bedford. I'm just going to, first little bit, I'm just going to explain exactly what I mean by Lost Streets and what I'm going to be talking about. Um, there's four sort of categories of streets I'm going to talk about. Ones which are absolutely genuinely lost, like Gravel Lane. Mm. On this, mm. this is Gravel yeah. Lane, which used to run from Midland Road to Fawn Lane. It's now underneath New Look and TK Maxx. Oh, it's, uh, yeah. So it's one of these streets which is are never likely to reappear. Uh, so yeah. not it, it, anything <laughs> like its original state. Mm. And of course, there's lots of streets. Uh, there's loads of streets underneath where Borough Hall is, either yeah. under Borough Hall itself or underneath the car park. So yeah. that's the first category. They're the ones that are absolutely, genuinely lost. No sign of them, gone for good. I've got a second category where streets have changed dramatically. The street's still there, but often there's no houses left on them. They may have a lot of industrial units or may just be a pedestrianised uh, shopping street. A lot of the streets around by the station fall into that category. There's remnants of streets around by the flats, for instance, around Greyfriars, that there's, there's, they retain the old street names in theory, but there's nothing catchy on them. Uh, the flats all, uh, they were all uh, rows of houses which all disappeared. So that, that's the second category. The third category are ones where the, uh, the street's still there, but they've changed the name dramatically uh, over the years. I won't be going on about them too much, but some of them are only ones that have got an interest in the history of how the names changed. I will, I will mention them. And some of them have had loads and loads of name changes. I'm only going to talk about the most the more important ones, or the more interesting ones. And then finally, the last category are streets which are lost because they never really ever existed. They existed on paper. Um, uh, but were never built, or there's only uh, sort of signs that they were actually ever ever thought of. And a good example of that was the West Bournemouth <coughs> Road, because of course they knocked down the entire other side of this of this street here in Westbourne Road, and the the whole the whole scheme was scrapped, and uh, we just ended up with a, a children's play area and a, a sort of an open a sort of green area. Um, and there's a few other things like that. There aren't so many of those, but I will mention some of them. So, I'm, with it being the Queen's Park Lives talk, I'm going to start in Queen's Park. I'm going to cover some of the roads in Queen's Park, and then I'm going to go clockwise around the outskirts of Bedford. So I'm going to do uh, Vaughan Road to Union Street next, mm -hmm. then Black Tom Park and the um, Bedford Park area, then Castle Road, and then south of the river, Caldwell Street, Kingsway, St John's, etc. And then back into the town centre, doing Midland Road, Harbour Street, uh, St Paul's Square, and finally ending up around the bus station area. Now, as I was putting this together, I had so much information about the bus station, and so many photographs of uh, buildings being knocked down and things being built, like multi-storey car park and the bus station, that I've, I'm only going to include a few of those and I'm actually going to make that a special uh, 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 talk uh, which I'll probably be doing next year. I've already done a talk on the history of Midland Road and the history of Bromham Road and this will be a history of all the bits in between, so all the streets. But I will be mentioning it, uh, there's, uh, I've got a whole load of, well, I hope it's quite interesting photographs of that area but it's quite selective, I, I couldn't fit them all in, it would take I could probably talk for two and a half or three hours if I did that. So I'm going to start off in, bed in, in Queen's Park. And for each area, I've actually just done a special map with roads uh, colour coded. And I'll show you an example. So this is uh, Queen's Park. And we've got ones in red and ones streets which have gone, disappeared completely. Uh, we've got Louise Place up um, off of Bronner Road, just up by the bridge, which, head, uh, which led to uh, J.P. White's Pineapple Works. And if you all got, you should all have uh, a flyer for the next talk, which uh, David Fowler here over there is uh, going to be doing for us in September. Um, there was 
On some old maps of Queen's Park street maps around 1900, there's a, a bit of a wiggly road which led from Forden Road down here up to nearly up to the Python Works. And it is basically the, the road which was the works road for Alice, but it was never a public road. Um, some of the maps actually have on it Madeleine, uh, sorry, Madeline Road, and Madeline is one of the uh, daughters of W.H. Uh, Allen. So at some point, uh, obviously they, they thought about naming this road, uh, but it was never ever a public road. It was, one of the, it was one of the main routes through the works, but it was always private. And it disappeared off, uh, off of normal street maps by about 1910. So they're the two that have definitely gone. The rest, the uh, the name changes, I'll, I'll talk about them in a, in a short while, um, uh, but the planned streets, the Western Relief Road is probably the most well-known <coughs> one. And I say it, it, was, it was due to go from Elstow Road, Amtill Road, Kempston Road, or Bedford Road, Kempston, over the river, through the middle of Queen's Park, which is why they knocked all the houses down, up to Bromham Road, and then up to Clapham Road. And it was going to be a Western bypass for Bedford. But he didn't really <laughs> bypass. <laughs> he didn't really bypass Bedford because it cut straight through loads of streets. So uh, what we really wanted is something similar to what we've what we've got now, which goes past uh, Great Denham, a bit something a bit further out. Although I'm sure that really should have been a dual carriageway. Uh, and I think that's going to be completely overloaded at some point, uh, particularly with more and more houses being built out that way. Um, they also um, there was a little spur. Um, road, which is going to join up with um, the bottom of Hurst Grove, uh, which again wasn't, uh, uh, wasn't, wasn't built. But what we're going to do now, I uh, say so there's a whole list of all these uh, roads which are uh, mainly name changes. Um, but if I go on to the next slide, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if all of you know about this, but the Queen Spark was actually named after Queen Victoria. Um, the guy who bought the, uh, the, the, sort of the, the uh, developer, who bought the land, uh, quite a wide strip of land from Bromham Road to Ford End Road uh, in 1887, which was uh, Queen Victoria's uh, Golden Jubilee year. And uh, he uh, called it the Queen's Park Building Estate um, uh, in honour of, uh, uh, of Queen Victoria. And what the original idea was, was that the top end, the Roman Road end, we're going to have long, wide uh, groves with uh, tree-lined uh, streets. And the bottom end was going to have a little selection of smaller, narrower streets. And it was intended that the plots that they were selling up to builders up the far end were quite a bit bigger. And they were intended to be for more well-to-do. Uh, and the workers were going to have the little streets down here. Now, one of the things that happened was in nine, uh, four years, five, no, six years later, 1893, W.H. Allens came to, came to Bedford. Uh, they'd opened by uh, 1894. They brought over 100 workers with them from their, fact, their original factory in, near Waterloo Station in London. And all of a sudden, they thought, oh, wait a minute, we need to get more smaller, um, smaller streets. So, what they, it was a little thing that they did. On the original plan, there was going to be a little kink in the road, which uh, signified, uh, in Hurst Grove, which signified the boundary of the, the poor person's street, the, 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 the better off one. So there's a little kink here at Howard Avenue. Of course, in the end, there is a little kink in the road, but it's actually up on Treston Road, because they, they actually decided that they would, they would take advantage of the fact that there was more uh, demand for smaller houses for people working at Allen's and other places nearby that they, um, they, uh, they moved the little kink further up. And of course, Cut Hurstworth goes the whole length, but Cutliffe Grove now only goes to about there, where it goes to Winifred Road. Winifred, by the way, David Preston who was the developer. Winifred was one of his daughters who was born the year that he bought the land. So uh, that's where uh, Winifred Road gets its name from. And the other thing that happened was a different developer, Major Coventry Campion from, south, from the south of Bedfordshire, purchased the other strip. 
and by 1894, he'd actually published his uh, map of what he was going to do. Um, the ones down the bottom here were ones that are already sold, and these are all plots. And you notice that a lot of these streets don't really match up with what they, what they how they, they, find, they were finally built. And um, this partly because the little stream that used to run across through Queen's Park ran across one bit there, and the road there was going to call Brookside, which uh, in the end, when they did uh, finally build the houses, it was a completely different uh, uh, set up of streets. And this is from 1893, the Queen's Park Estate, the original one. The, the pink ones are houses that are already built and sold, and the red ones are ones which are under construction or waiting to be sold. The green ones are ones that are waiting, uh, that, uh, uh, are waiting somewhat for a builder to actually purchase the, the plots. Uh, the two developers didn't see eye to eye. Um, and it, David Preston, who did the original bit, he had to do all the, all the groundwork to get it uh, connected up with the uh, mains water and sewage. Uh, uh, gas wasn't a problem because the gas works was just down the bottom, so that wasn't a problem. But he, uh, David Preston had to have uh, all sorts of uh, uh, problems getting it connected up to uh, mains water and sewage, which in fact it was connected up on Midland Road near Alexander Road. Um, uh, of course, when this other major Coventry champion came in, um, he didn't have to do all that work because the sewers and uh, water uh, pipes were already reached this side. So all he had to do was just extend it to his bit. <coughs> One thing that did happen was, uh, because they were dispute, uh, in dispute with each other over all sorts of things, um, they actually built a little wall across, they um, uh, Preston bought a little wall, built a little wall across uh, Howard Avenue and Iddlesley Road. Uh, it wasn't a tall wall, it was only about three foot high, uh, and if you were agile you could climb over it, but uh, if, you, if you weren't, or if you were, say, uh, a tradesman that had a cart, or a horse and cart, or a hand cart, you had to go all the way down to Fordham Road to get round it. And um, a local uh, character, I think some people might call Nutter, uh, called uh, John Howard, not the John Howard, um, having fortified himself uh, at the engine and tender in the globe, um, set about it with a sledgehammer one day, and he literally rode one. He had a handcart, and he used to go around selling smoked fish, uh, uh, bloaters and kippers, but of course he, if he wanted to go from um, from the roads on this side down uh, to go to uh, Marlborough Road or Coventry Road, you have to go all the way down. So he set a, 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 apparently a big crowd watched him do it. Uh, the police arrived, carted him off, and uh, but there was a whip round to pay his bail and also to pay his fine because they, they find all they find him was uh, the amount it cost for them to rebuild the wall. Uh, but eventually they they. Uh, they, they, the dispute was, uh, was, was over and uh, the road, both roads went all the way through. There's still a little bit of a remnant of the wall in um, someone's garden in um, um, Howard Avenue. It's a slightly different bit of uh, front garden wall to all the others. <laughs> and oh, th this is an interesting one. Down the very bottom end of uh, Queen's Park, south, south of Forden Road, um, there's a whole number of uh, streets all named after sort of heroes of some description. Lawrence and Street and Havelock Street, they were both uh, forgotten people these days, but they were all people who uh, were fairly high up in the British Army in India and uh, were the sort of heroes of the, um, uh, the Indian Mutiny and various other things. Um, of course, we've got Rally Street here, and we've got Nelson Street, obviously uh, British naval heroes. But what about Francis Drake? He's a, a well-known uh, British sailor from, from the historical past. But there was actually going to be a Drake Street, which is going to be along the bottom and join all of those four streets up. And this is a map here from around about the First World War, showing Drake Street. It was never, ever built. It was one of these ones that was, uh, it, there was an idea of doing it, but it was never built. 
And this aerial photograph here, this is Ford End Road, uh, this is Raleigh Street, this is Nelson Street. This is a, the forerunner of the old uh, football ground, the Eagles football ground. And Drake Street would have gone through this bit here where it's mainly allotments. It actually became, if anyone uh, remembers the old football ground, it was the car park that was by the supporters club behind the Nelson Street end stand. It was sort of gra part gravel, gravel, part tarmac. But that was the only bit that uh, was basically Drake Street and it never went all the way across. Um, this is Louise Place. One of the ones that's definitely disappeared. Um, this is uh, Bournemouth Road Bridge. You'll have to excuse this white line. It's an artifact from the um, from where they were going to crop the uh, crop the photograph from the aerial view. Uh, so this was the um, the routes down into um, J.P. White's Pythal Works here. Um, again, it, uh, it's, it carried on there uh, even once uh, uh, W.H. Allen's took over that part, that part of the works, uh, but it's, it's long, since, long since disappeared. And of course, uh, this bridge is now closed until next <laughs> Easter as well. And this is the Western Relief Road, uh, the route to the Western Relief Road, say from Elstow Road, a new, <coughs> a new bridge over. A little spur off to the bottom of Hurst Grove, the bottom of, bottom of Ford End Road Bridge, and then it was going to go up eventually to uh, link up with Clapham Road. And here's a few photographs from the 1970s of this side, the side of the road over there being demolished. And we've also got a group of, uh, there's a few councillors there, and recognise a couple, I don't know if anybody else recognised, it's Colin Saunders and um, Jane George. <laughs> Um, there's a few, I don't know if anyone recognises any of the other ones there. All of the comments was between Jane and Jane George and Colin Saunders. Yes, and they seem to have picked up uh, what looks like a... Oh, possibly. Yeah, yeah possibly. They seem to have picked up a couple of uh, local children as well. <laughs> they don't seem to be particularly impressed. By the fact that they're standing linked arms in front of a bulldozer. But, uh... <laughs> and here's a, a view that they uh, that was published in the Bed's Times, showing what the proposed route was. Uh, one of the big problems was that they decided that this section was actually going to be below street level. Um, which it also found out uh, to, to avoid the, the noise to, the, to this side of Westbourne Road and the uh, and Chestnut Avenue, the other side. Um, but they also found it was going to then be, go, going to be below the water table, so they'd have to have <laughs> the pumping stations pumping it uh, virtually continuously uh, to keep the water out of it. Uh, I know there was it was on off on off. Uh, well, since the 1950s, uh, and certainly in the 60s and 70s, uh, uh, newspaper headlines in the Bed's Times, etc., were saying, oh, we've got some more money, but it is going to happen, then saying, oh, no, it's not. But uh, by, by the, by the uh, late 70s, it was, it was totally abandoned, and uh, basically we've got this little belonging sort of park type thing now instead. So now we're going to go clockwise around. We're going to go to the... Um, Based, uh, Road, Union Street. A couple of roads have disappeared. A beautifully named Diamond Alley, which I, I'll <laughs> explain a bit, a little bit about that shortly. It wasn't as beautiful as its name would sound. And uh, Beecham Row, which was just behind um, the, uh, the, the shops on the south side of, uh, of, of Bromham Road. Um, Various ones changed, its na changed their names. Um, the <coughs> Shakespeare Road, which is number A up there, was one of the first was the, the first road of what was called the Beckett Estate. Uh, it was uh, in the 1880s or late 1870s, and it was originally called going to be called Beckett Avenue. When um, they got started building all the other roads, which are all named after uh, literary fig British literary figures like uh, Chaucer and Spencer and Milton, they, um, they changed its name to Shakespeare Road so it fitted in with all the others. But it was originally going to be called Beckett, uh, Beckett Avenue. 
And this little bit here, which is now part of Linden Road and Dinova Road, is going to be called, was originally called the Ovals, simply because it was a round shape but elongated. It wasn't a real oval, but it was called, it was called, it was called the Oval. Um, Bunyan Street. Now, what is now called Trevor Street was originally called Bunyan Street. Um, it wasn't called Bunyan Street for very long. It's only a very short street with just a few, just a few terrace type houses. Um, there was complaints about uh, uh, from people in other people in Bedford saying that uh, it gave the wrong impression. Uh, they said that Bunyan being John Bunyan being uh, one of the most famous sons of Bedford shouldn't have a, a tiny little street that's got nowhere that isn't anywhere near anything that he's ever done. So they, they got them to change it to Trevor Street. And Trevor Street was a little bit more um, suitable because the Trevor family was the, uh, one of the main families in Bromham. So at least it was on Bromham Road and uh, it was called Trevor Street. Of course, I walked through there uh, last week and uh, of course there's no house, there hasn't been any houses there for years. It's, it's uh, pedestrian, a small pedestrian bit and then it's all car parking for offices. So that was, uh, not only changed its name but it's also changed dramatically from what it originally was. Um, if you went, think, went to my, my talk on, um, on Bromham Road, um, you found out about uh, Conduit Street. Now, part of the, the closest part of, Bun of uh, Bromham Road to Bedford, uh, to town centre, the section from Bedford Prison up to where the convent school used to be, was called, was called Conduit, Road until, uh, Conduit Street until the 1880s. Um, and it's because it actually led to a thing called Conduit, which was a, um, uh, an artificial waterway. It was possibly originally a stream, but it had been diverted and formed uh, like a channel uh, draining off uh, the land to the north. And it was almost certainly uh, made by the Grey Friars. They were quite into uh, doing uh, that type of thing. Um, e is now it's what's called Warwick Avenue. But until 1916-17, it was called Waldeck, or it should really be Valdeck Avenue, um, which is a small town in northern Germany. And that fell uh, foul of the anti-German sentiment uh, during the First World War. Um, uh, well, Valdeck Avenue became Warwick Avenue, and there was one other nearby, near to Bedford. Um, if you head out towards Kempston Barracks on the road to Kempston, um, there used to be Battenberg Street on the left-hand side, and uh, that changed to Marn Street uh, at, the, at the same time. And it was the same, roughly the same time that the royal family became the House of Windsor, rather than the long German name that they used to be. So basically getting rid of the, the German collection. And they, they broke out, they didn't happen suddenly overnight, there were proposals and things like that, and then they, they were adopted by 1917. Uh, both the street names, uh, Battenberg Street and Valdeck Street, uh, both, uh, both disappeared. And the last one here was the thing called, uh, I've, I've been told it's Howe Street, not Hall Street. Uh, I think Hall Street uh, seems to think, sound like it's the red light district. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Howe Street, uh, how, the Howes uh, family were uh, very prominent in Bedford in the uh, uh, 16 and 1700s and uh, several generations of them became mayor and they, form, they founded a, a charity which uh, uh, provided um, sort of various gifts and almshouses which I'll be coming to, uh, coming to later when I get to House Court which is um, behind uh, Clinton Cards uh, off of Harper Street. Mm -hmm. So, this is um, the site of where the conduit was. Um, this um, little stone is actually in the wall, it used to be in the wall of number 57 Bromham Road. It's now in the, in the small wall that's outside the job centre. Um, there's, um, you can see the cigarette ends and things of people are sitting <laughs> there. Uh, it's, um, it says, here stood, here stood the old conduit. Um, it's apparently not the original <coughs> stone, because the original one was taken out in 1925 and a replacement made. Um, but it's still there. Um, it's not very, it's not very, uh, the, the way they've done the pavement, they've actually covered up part of the bottom of it now. 
but it's, uh, I've got some real funny looks so I that uh, have with the camera out on the hands and knees in front of me, <laughs> sort of, uh, aiming, aiming at what looked like a blank bit of wall. But, uh, I took several photographs just in case it didn't cut out because everyone was looking at me. Uh, people were uh, uh, waiting around by the, uh, by the job centre. And as I say, it was called uh, Conduit Street uh, until, uh, until the 1880s. And, uh, then uh, it became Bromham Road all the way up to Bedford Prison and Condrick Road was built on the other side in the 1880s and that, uh, that ran sort of parallel with the Conduit. Um, Beecham Row, um, with a row of cottages, um, uh, built in the 1830s, um, demolished in the 1960s to make way for uh, uh, the road that now goes through uh, to Gray, the, the junction with uh, Greyfriars, Bromham Road, and Union Street, that crossroads. And Beecham Court was built on the, uh, uh, built on, on in its place. Um, it, they were never considered to be the, the better houses in, uh, in, in Bedford. Um, they were badly affected by the cholera epidemic, about a quarter of all the deaths from cholera in the last in 1849 were in, um, in, there was only about a dozen or so houses and there was uh, nine deaths from cholera. I had a, um, a grandmother who oh, born, they, oh, born yeah. there, yes, yeah. One, one problem they actually had was the, when the, uh, the houses at the top end of Union Street on Tavistock, on the Tavistock uh, side um, were built, they, uh, they basically had an open sewer which led down that way and if it overflowed you basically got effluent uh, flowing that actually passed either through or by the side of these, uh, these cottages so uh, it, it was certainly not, not particularly healthy. And Tavistock Place, this is a photograph uh, taken in uh, uh, about the 1950s. Um, um, this is the Forester's Arms here, this is Union Street, and this, these were all knocked down to make way for Union Street Clinic. But Diamond Alley, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to enlarge this a little bit. <laughs> Diamond Alley, this is, this is where the Forester's Arms is, and this is Union Street. Uh, this photograph is taken looking that way. Just around the corner, it actually now forms part of the car park for the Union Street uh, uh, clinic, was a little place called Diamond Alley. It's not marked on any of the normal things that are in survey maps. It's marked on it, but there's no name on it. Um, it's uh, 12 houses, six on each side, with this little lock at the end. And I managed to find in Bedford Archives a, a very badly drawn, hand-drawn map from the 1830s. Mm. Um, this actually says Diamond Alley, it's upside down looking at. But there's the six houses, not, not that well drawn. There's two little blocks here, and then it actually says Privy. So basically, <laughs> most lots of six houses had a toilet between them, um, one on each side. And this little bit in the middle actually says, pool of filthy water. <laughs> <laughs> so and it's, a, it's uh, probably, uh, even uh, compared with some of the other, uh, other places, it's probably not, uh, not the healthiest of, uh, of, of, uh, of streets in Bedford. So now I'm moving around clockwise again. I'm just going on to the uh, what's basically called Black Tom area, the Prime Minister's area. Um, most of them are named after Prime Ministers from the, uh, the, the uh, 19th century. Um, almost any Prime Minister of note uh, from about the 1820s through to 1900 is represented, represented as one of the street names. Um, uh, of the prominent ones, one of the few that you probably think, oh, there's no Disraeli, but in fact, he was the Earl of Beaconsfield, so we've got Beaconsfield Street there. Uh, all the others are all um, um, uh, Cannon, uh, Wellington, Derby, uh, 
obviously Gladstone, they're all, they're all prime ministers. There's, there, not every single prime minister uh, from the, sort of the 19th century is uh, represented there, but um, there's an awful lot of them. And in the 19, uh, late 60s, early 70s, the, the entire area was, um, uh, was completely transformed. Uh, some areas were lost, com some streets were lost completely, but it was in red. Was, uh, that was where all the blocks of flats were built. Uh, and some of the others, the streets still survive, but uh, all the original houses have gone. Uh, Foster Street has got a few of the original houses at the Foster Hill Road end, but all the rest have gone. Uh, ones like um, Derby Street, there's a Derby Place, but that, uh, Derby Street went north-south and Derby Place goes east-west. And uh, most, like Derby Street and Peel Street, large, large chunks of it are underneath Queen Street Car Park. Um, I'm going to go straight to the ones that the names have changed because uh, some of those are quite interesting. Um, a is, is now Park Avenue. Um, that was originally uh, the first place that uh, was actually had names that uh, appear on maps. It was known as Gypsy Lane, and it joined uh, what was then um, the, the road that went up to Foster Hill um, to Kimbolton Road. Um, but when all, all of this land all came under the auspices of uh, the St. John's, and the, um, the person who formed... Uh, was the, one of the main founders of, 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 the, of St. John's was uh, someone called Roger de Parry, and he, uh, which is where you get to Paris Avenue. And one of the other people was a guy called Lenev or Lenive, and it was proposed that Park Avenue at the top is going to be called Lenive Avenue, uh, a change from Gypsy Lane to Lenive Avenue. And I'm going to show you a map that's actually got that, uh, that on it uh, from the 1880s. Um, Park Road, Park Road West and Park Road East uh, were the two found, uh, was the original uh, border of the, the first part that was built. All of these were built slightly later. And when they built Roth Avenue through the, through the entire thing, it didn't really affect Park Road West, but Park Road East disappeared and the, the, the house is still there, but the name changed to, uh, to Roth Avenue. What is now Foster Hill Road had all sorts of names over the years. Um, this area up here, where the park is, um, was called Berry Fields for, for a long time before. In fact, quite a lot of the area was called Berry Fields. And uh, in very old maps, um, what is now Foster Hill Road was called Little Berry Lane. And there's lots of different spellings um, in the past. Uh, uh, Berry, B-E-R-R-Y, B-E-R-Y, or B-U-R-Y as well. Um, but um, when the cemetery opened in 1855, it was changed to Cemetery Road. Um, when they built all these houses all the way up to where the cemetery is, um, they, a lot of people didn't particularly like being called, uh, saying that they're on Cemetery Road, so they called it Foster Hill Road. Because the hill at the end, which goes up past the cemetery, was always known as Foster's Hill. Um, the Foster family had Brick Hill Farm up on, up, up on the top. Uh, so uh, the hill up to uh, Brick Hill Farm was called Foster's Hill. Uh, so it became Foster Hill Road and uh, it remains this, to, to this day. And the other interesting one is the main road at the bottom, which is now Tavistock Street. Um, that, um, in, up till about the 1820s, was the very outskirts of town in that direction. And it was used as a rubbish tip, basically. Uh, and it was known as Offal Lane. Now these, these days, Offal is normally only used for entrails and bits of meat that, you, that people wouldn't normally eat. But in fact, um, centuries ago, Offal just meant refuse. Um, they wouldn't have had the refuse that we have today, which is mainly drinks, cartons and tins and plastic and all that sort of stuff. But all odd bits and pieces that, that, need, that, they, that needed to be dumped uh, were, were just called offal. Um, and so these days, offal, offal really sort of fairly specifically uh, refers to uh, meat products that uh, can't be used for any, uh, any normal use. And uh, so it's called Offal Lane. When this first section here, this little triangle called the uh, 
the new town was built in the 1820s, 1830s. Of course, they didn't particularly like the, the fact that the, the road leading to it was called Offal Lane. So they changed it to Offer Street. Um, uh, Offer being the King of Mercia from uh, around about uh, 700-ish to, eight, I think he died just before eight, AD uh, 800. Um, reputedly buried in Bedford. Um, it's a little bit uh, dodgy. Uh, there's other play. He, he, it's known that he died in Hertfordshire. He died in, in St Albans or close to St Albans. Mm. Um, there are other places in the Midlands who claim that they were buried there. Tamworth and Atherstone um, uh, both claim uh, him as uh, being buried there, although no one knows exactly where. Legend has it that he was, bought, he was buried in, um, in Bedford in a, a chapel by the river, and during a flood, he, uh, the chapel and the coffin was, uh, tomb was swept away. Um, but that story comes 400 years afterwards. Yeah, actually, that comes from around about 1200. Uh, he died, uh, I think, about 790 something. So uh, it's, it's a little bit, uh, it's possible, but uh, he didn't really have any particular connection with Bedford. But, uh, um, so why would they <coughs> take, bring him to Bedford? But Offer Street sounded better. A king of, king of Mercia. Mm -hmm. um, Offers Dyke uh, have been uh, sort of running along the border with, uh, with Wales. Uh, he was a well known person, so certainly better than uh, uh, stinking entrails. <laughs> Bedford is, uh, has the best claim. Bedford has, possibly has the best claim. The best claim. There are others, you're quite right. Yes, yes. Bedford has the best yes, claim. Yes, yes. Uh, it's just it, it, a lot of people say uh, with some certainty that he's. Uh, that we often sometimes read that he was some certainty that he was buried there. It's, I think there's a bit of a fair amount of uncertainty in, in it. It's possible, but uh, I don't think anyone will really know will know one way or the other. And um, the bottom end of Tavistock Street was uh, renamed Broadway, but that was relatively recent. That was 1913 when that was uh, renamed. So what we've got here, um, this is a um, uh, drawing by Barnaby Rudge, uh, a well-known um, artist, Bedford artist uh, from the early uh, 1800s. And this is Offer Street in, in 1837. This is St Peter's Church. This is uh, the wall which uh, is now part, would now be part of the prison. Um, in, the, in those days, uh, the prison was in two parts. There was the bit that was on Bromham Road. And this bit was called the House of Correction, and it was a place where uh, lesser crimes were uh, it's usually where people doing uh, a couple of weeks of hard labour, or on the tread, which would sometimes be on a treadmill, or um, uh, or breaking up stones, or something like that. Um, 1845, that all merged with Bed the, 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 the bit of Bedford Prison that was on um, Bromham Road. But so in 1837, that would be a, se a separate prison. And this is the uh, road leading round um, to what would eventually be the Broadway as it curls round to end up uh, at the top of the high street. And this is a view, a fairly early view from the uh, from Bedford Cemetery. And you see there's not many gravestones uh, there, plenty of people around. And uh, again, this would have been uh, Park Road, Park Road East, Park Road West, down there, all the other, uh, the other um, streets hadn't been built then. This line across here is likely to have been um, uh, Gypsy Lane and this road leading up to the cemetery will be Cemetery Road and which is now Foster Hill Road. And this is a plan of a uh, proposed uh, how building the state uh, which is the Pemberley Road area. <coughs> I, I put this up because this is the original the Neve or the, the Nev Avenue, um, let's say uh, within about uh, half a dozen years from when this was, uh, these plans came out, it changed to the Park Avenue. And, uh, <coughs> after the park had opened in 1888, uh, it, it soon became uh, Park Avenue. Mm -hmm. And this is a little thing from about from other local papers saying that uh, the uh, Paving and Lighting Committee had recommended that the name of the road be changed to, to Rectory Road. But uh, Alderman Howard, second, uh, seconded yeah. by Alderman Cutlet, resolved that the name be Foster Hill Road. And they said that uh, it was a more pleasant and simple <coughs> name than Cemetery Road. 
And this is an advert in the paper in 1913. Now, it's not very easy to read, but it says it's the change of the name to the Broadway. And it says it's the broadest, lightest, healthiest, and pleasantest um, shopping centre in Bedford. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that, that area was, uh, was one of the few areas that was uh, bombed during the war, uh, mainly within centuries. Uh, and this is actually Dar this is Derby Street, um, uh, which was uh, badly affected. Several houses at least had their top floors burnt out uh, by, by incendiaries. And this is uh, in July 1942. And Here's a couple of photographs of the, uh, from the early 70s showing the uh, blocks of flats and some of the older buildings that are still there. Majority of these, are, I haven't actually identified exactly which bits of street these are, but uh, it's almost certain there's hardly any old, old buildings left on, in that area, so they're almost certainly all gone. And I think at that point, we'll just have a, a quick break for 10 minutes. Uh, okay, so the second half. Um, we've moved over to the Castle Road area, still going clockwise. A few streets lost. Um, we've got Brown's Court, which was uh, just off the west side of St Cuthbert's, almost opposite where the ship in St Cuthbert's was, behind the buildings on that, on that side. Um, we've got on Newnham Street, um, we've got Featherstone Building, which was buildings, which was next to the Castle Pub. And next door to that, Hand Court. And the other road that's completely lost is Thames Street, although there are streets which do basically the same job. Uh, and that went along the embankment to Waterloo, the uh, collection of uh, uh, old cottages on, uh, on the riverside before the embankment was built. Um, we've got quite a few things changed names. I'm not really going to go into those too much because there's a slide coming up of the, uh, the, the Bower Estate, as it was called, in 1881. And you notice that quite an awful lot of roads, uh, like Bower Street, was originally going to be East Street, and Howdy Street was originally going to be Buckingham Road. But I'm not going to go into those too much because the, um, uh, it comes up on one of the slides coming up. So I'm going to concentrate more on the four that have disappeared, because it is Lost Streets. And Brown's Court was a, just a small square of old cottages, just behind the west side, so almost opposite um, the, the ship pub on, um, on, um, on St Cuthbert's. Um, it was just a, a square, it was, a bit, it was originally later called a, um, St Cuthbert's Court, but for most of its life it was called Brown's Court, presumably after Mr Brown. Um, uh, all the pictures I've ever seen uh, seem to show trees or something growing out of the tops of the soil. They're very heavily uh, covered in uh, vegetation. Um, there's a drawing. Um, this is one of the only things I actually managed to find. It's actually this side. Uh, most of them show straight on. Um, but this one actually shows a side view with some cottages down this bit here. One other interesting thing is, is this tower in the background, and that was um, part of the old fire station, which is still there on Mill Street. Um, you can just about make out where it says fire station. Um, and this was uh, used for several things. Um, it was used as a lookout. If it was a, a time of the year uh, of a lot of, lot of dry weather, and uh, but some of the, there was still um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, timbered houses and also uh, thatched houses. So they would uh, sometimes, if there was a high risk of fires, uh, they could have a, a watcher at night, uh, watching out for smoke and flames. But the main thing it was used for was to ha hang out the old canvas um, fire hoses to dry. Um, the old fire hoses were made of canvas with um, um, usually brass fittings. And um, if it, they, by hanging them from a high tower, it meant they didn't get tangled up, and also it meant they tried out thoroughly so they didn't rot. Uh, it only appears in a couple of the pictures, but uh, it's been well, long, long since demolished. All of these all disappeared, it, the, the whole thing disappeared in the 1930s. And then we have the uh, Featherstone buildings and hand courts. Now, I was actually doing some research on these, looking through the um, British newspaper archive, just searching the name 
Featherstone Buildings, Bedford, and Court, Bedford. And all the early ones, I knew they were built around about the 1830s, but all the really early ones didn't mention anything about Bedford as such. But they mentioned a lot about the Harbour Trust, and they mentioned a lot about Hobart. And then I discovered a book that's in the Heritage Library that, uh, from 1828, which uh, gives a map of uh, the Harbour Trust lands where they, got, uh, they get their, their rental that uh, pays uh, for the Harbour Trust charity in the schools. And uh, this map, this is the, the Main Street, Hoban, and you see we've got Featherstone Buildings and Hand Court. And this is a map of Newman Road, and this is the Featherstone Buildings, and right next to it, Hand Court, exactly the same as they were on the, um, uh, in, in London. Of course, there's a lot of the uh, areas of London that were the, uh, the Harbour Trust areas. We've all got, there's Bedford Street there as well. Um, this, this is the, um, the castle, the pub of the castle. The Three Cups is actually just off the edge of the map there. But just opposite um, Pedestone Buildings, this building here was the Three Cups. <laughs> and uh, this is Three Cups Yard. The pub uh, is now called the Old Nick. But the Three Cups Yard is still there. It's a very posh, gated community. It's still the original buildings, but they've obviously done, been done up uh, uh, dramatically. And you have uh, there's a, a big gate, and it's sort of uh, you have to put a password in to get into it. So it's uh, and it looks quite expensive. I, I had a quick look. There were some flats for sale, and there was nothing under kind of seven hundred or eight hundred thousand pounds for two <coughs> one bedroom flat. So it's a pretty uh, pretty classy area. Um, so the, the other thing about the Three Cups, though, is that um, uh, the Three Cups wasn't actually built until uh, the 1890s. And on the um, what's called Waterloo, the, uh, the, the, co the cottages by the side of the river, there was a pub there, and that was called the, uh, the Three Cups. And that was demolished in the 1890s, and in those days, you only you, you couldn't actually open up a new pub unless it's in an area that is absolutely completely new and a new population on it. You had to transfer the uh, the license from one pub to the other. So the three cups on Union Street almost certainly probably didn't have much to do with this three cups that was opposite the Featherstone buildings, but it was uh, to do the fact that it, the, the name was transferred and the license was transferred. From, uh, from Waterloo, just, uh, just down by the river. Well, this is, this is Hand Court. Well, this is Newman Street. Hand Court is through that, this little alleyway. And you actually had to go down this little passage, this very narrow passageway, and it opened out. There was uh, some cottages on that side, and this, this faced it. If we go back, oh, sorry. If I go back, this is the passageway, this is the first set of cottages, and this is the slightly longer one on the top of that, that, that face there. It was an extremely narrow passage to get to it. Uh, obviously, only, uh, there would only be one person, I mean, it couldn't even have two people walking side by side to get down there. And this, it, they, they, these all disappeared in the 1930s. Featherstone buildings are still there until about 1960. Uh, it's a, a group of eight uh, three story buildings. Um, let's say this again is Newnham Street, and this is the, uh, the, the pub, the castle by the side of it. And I've got quite a good uh, aerial view from the 1950s. This is the Featherstone buildings, the back of it, and this is the area where Hang Court used to be. Um, it's now all completely gone, and it's now. Um, Dame um, Alice Court retirement home, opposite where Peacocks used to be. Yes. 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 Um, so this is this is Newman, uh, Newman Street, and this is the uh, the pub, the castle. Mm -hmm. And this is a plan of the Bower Building uh, Building Estate in St Cuthbert's, 1881. And you can actually see, I don't know if you can actually read all these. Castle, it wasn't Castle, Castle Road, it was Castle Street. Um, Bushmead Avenue was, uh, was, is, is one of the few that was actually still the same. But all this land was owned by the Gary family, the Gary family, who uh, owned a lot of land in North Bedfordshire. And they were, their family home was based on Bushmead Abbey in, um, out towards Kimbolton. 
so hence the Bushmead Avenue. But uh, this is Buckingham Street, uh, which became Halvey Street, and East Street, which is the far the most easterly of the Bower building estate, eventually became Bower Street. And Wade Geary Street eventually became Waterloo. And you just notice down here a thing called River Crescent. Well, that actually bypassed the old buildings which were still there till about 1890. They were knocked down uh, to make what is now the embankment. And the next three slides are actually probably these days, if they were done up and uh, renovated, they would be uh, probably uh, something that people would go down for just to see, because they, they actually look in some ways quite picturesque. Um, they were considered to be hovels basically at the time though. Uh, and you can see these are where the embankment is now. This, this is where all the, flower, all the flowers would be, would be grown on the embankment. This is the, uh, the other side of the road where the embankment hotel and the bigger houses, and you can see they already started building them behind there. And again, these are the, the new houses that they were building, and these are the ones that are being demolished around about 1890. Yeah. And the, the very, the, apparently, the last person to agree to a price to be bought out was uh, one of the uh, Covington families. Uh, a guy called Frank Covington, who, uh, who was a, um, a clay pipe maker, and he, uh, he sort of strung it out longer than anybody else to get more money to, uh, to, to, to be persuaded to move out. And this was the kiln that he used to fire the clay pipes. Now we're going south of the river, carrying on clockwise round. Loads and loads of places in red here that, uh, 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 that uh, streets yeah. have lost. Yeah. I'm not going to go through every yeah. single yeah. one of them. And what I'm, going, what I'm going to do is actually go through the, the, the slides I've got of actual pictures of them. So this is an interesting one. Um, the, the block of what is now block of flats um, but was the old BT building. When that was being built, this is a photograph from the top. And this is what is now the roundabout at the foot of, um, uh, of London Road. Uh, this is London Road Bridge, this is Lee Drantel Road, this is Kingsway, and this is St John's. As you can see, it's not a roundabout. It's a weird, weird shape that diverts all the traffic around. Uh, I, I mean, any traffic coming down here and wanted to go down what's now Road Walk, we'd have to go all the way down to Hallwell Street uh, to the turn, turn right, there'd be no right turn, because it's just completely blocked off. What you can see there is the rem some of the remnants of the King's Ditch, which is the old fortified, um, uh, southern, uh, sort of southern for fortified ditch, uh, dating back over a thousand years. And this is um, St John's Church, and that was the Phoenix Pub, it's just there. It's quite an interesting one because it was corner. Wilmer's corner would have been there. It would have followed this curve there, but uh, that that had been knocked down by then. And this is Duck Mill Lane, um, looking towards the old Bridge Hotel. It's still it's still there, but it's very narrow. Obviously, all of this is gone. This is now the hotel. Uh, is it called the Bedford Centre Hotel? And it's changed its name so many times. Uh, County Hotel, the Moat House, I think it's called Bedford Centre, Bedford Central Hotel or Bedford Centre Hotel. Um, so, so all these buildings have gone. This is an interesting one. This is Butcher Row. And I have to just uh, zoom in on this one. Butcher Row is actually <coughs> this little bit here. Again, it's one of these ones at a tiny little entrance between two houses, and it's just a small row, a small row of cottages. And if I um, zoom out, in some ways it actually looks quite picturesque. Um, again, all, all overgrown with ivy and stuff. That disappeared in the 1930s uh, and is now underneath Bedford, uh, Bedford College. Just to the south of um, Cordwell Street was a, uh, a little yard called um, 
Bridewell Yard, and that was the site of one of the ancient prisons of, of Bedford. It was a very tiny prison, probably just used for people who were misbehaving on the south side of the river. And um, it was one of the ones that was actually visited, um, with John Howard was uh, obviously a big one for uh, prison reform, and he visited a lot of prisons, both uh, locally and nationally. And he made notes on, uh, on, the, on the conditions, uh, sanitary and whatever, and how well they were run. And he did make much, much of a way of notes on, uh, on the Bridewell, uh, but he noted it had three rooms, it was up there, there was no fireplace, and there was very little light in any of the cells. So it's probably not a very pleasant place to, uh, to be in, particularly in the winter, because it sounds as though they were completely unheated. It's, these are two views of a uh, Bridewell Yard. Uh, it, I, it's unlikely that any of these, uh, I think the Bridewell was actually demolished about 1800, um, but these, uh, this was on, on the site. So whether any of these bits were actually part of the original Bridewell, it's very difficult to tell. And now we have Pilcroft Street. A uh, couple of, uh, couple of uh, there was originally two Pilcroft Streets. Um, one called Pilcroft Street West and one called Pilcroft Street East. Um, Pilcroft Street East was the main Pilcroft Street. And the, the, the other one, the western, uh, western end of it, eventually became Melbourne Street. Um, but these are actually your Pil uh, Pilcroft Street itself. A long, long street uh, with a bit of a curve at the end of it. Uh, street uh, and a long series of uh, terraced houses open straight out onto the pavement. Again, the grandfather in one of the. the, 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 the yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the back of it. Uh, this is uh, the King's Ditch, and the back of this is the back of the west side of the main Pilcroft Street, and uh, well, sorry, the east side of uh, Pilcroft Street. A lot of the um, um, back garden privies open straight out onto onto the um, onto the King's Ditch. Uh, it doesn't look particularly healthy, but uh, this is the back wall in the back gardens of uh, of, of Pilcroft Street. Uh, again, it was one that uh, was fair. If, if there was any outbreaks of anything, uh, that quite often there was uh, centred on Pilcroft Street, to the south of the river. And these are some old houses in what's was ended up being called St John's Court, but it was known as Pepper Alley for, for well over a hundred years, and Rosemary Alley before that. Um, this was where the Phoenix pub would be just behind there. It was just it was just to the north of uh, just off of St John's Street, almost opposite St John's Church, and it went from St John's Street to uh, to the King's Ditch. And just around the corner, these were, these were demolished in 1958 as they prepared to build Kingsway. And this was just around the corner, and this is the Goat public house, which was uh, demolished at the same time. These were on Amptill Street, just round from Milner's Corner, just before you got to the, the, uh, the bridge which led to Amptill Road. Now we have an aerial view. Um, this is Kingsway. This is from the early 60s, and we've got Home Street leading all the way down to the river. This is Caldwell Street, and we've got Holt Row, <coughs> Great Butt Street, Little Butt Street, and Farrer Street. All of those streets are now completely gone. They've all, dis they've all disappeared. Most of them, all the one on this side, they're basically underneath Borough Hall or Borough Hall Car Park, and uh, Farrer Street is now under a, a um, building known as the Horseshoe, which is on the corner of, uh, of Kingsway and Caldwell Street. And this is a photograph taken a little bit later. Um, uh, Borough Hall under construction, and as you can see, there's still little remnants. This is all that's left of Farrow Street, even then, there's not, there, there's, all the houses have gone. Um, this is Little Butt Street, the Black Diamond Pub on the corner, mm. and uh, this is uh, Great Butt Street, Little remnant of Holt, of Holt Row, uh, but Home Street is completely gone in that. And these are photographs of some, uh, yeah. some houses in Great Butt Street. So, 
quite peculiar. Uh, some, some of them are more conventional terraced houses. These are uh, a, little bit, a little bit peculiar houses, but uh, quite small. Uh, they look quite well, relatively well made, actually, compared with some of the others uh, of that era. They were all built around about the 1860s, and as I say, they, they all disappeared underneath uh, Borough Hall or, or the car park in the, uh, in the 1960s. And here we have Little Butt Street, uh, celebrations for the coronation of King George V in uh, 1911. It looks like there's a, a men's table and a women's table. <laughs> a bit of segregation there by the looks of it. There's a few, there's a few mixed up, but uh, it looks like the women are kept together, all kept together and the men have got their own, got their own table. Uh, and this is a photograph, um, there's a postcard of Little Butt Street looking towards the river and you can just make out in the distance the, uh, the chimneys on the ele electric uh, generation station on Freeman Street. Of course the, that area all was quite prone to flooding, being quite low lying. And here are bit, some of the cottages or sort of some of the uh, uh, houses on Holt Road. This is Home Street uh, uh, from, the, from the river looking up to Cordwell Street at the end. Myself and my brother have got a vested interest because my grandmother on my mother's side lived in that end one, that one there about halfway along just before the gap. And it's number 17, was it? 17 Home Street. <coughs> And this, part of this is still there. Um, this is the wall of, um, of Preburn Street. This is the Black Diamond. This is Little Butt Street. And the, um, the bit that goes over to, if you go, go to the archives, um, is up the top of these steps. And you can still got the bit, this is the one that heads down towards the car park, which I don't think is open anymore. I'm not sure if there's anything there or if it's all been completely blocked off. But you can still go down in the opposite direction, sort of that way, um, down to down to the uh, down to the river on the other side, and this little area was called the rec or recreation ground, and that um, I can remember when we used to visit our grandmother that uh, we often used to say, "Can we go and play in the rec?" Because there were some swings and slides and on odds and ends, and so as long as you don't go near the river. But there was a little, little fence, but it wasn't a very good fence here. It wasn't a bit like that sort of fence, I mean, a rickety old, uh, rickety old fence that kept you away from the river. And just over the bridge to all, um, this is Britannia Road, there is King's Place. Again, pretty well all of this is gone. This is the Crown Public House, which is no longer a pub. Um, still, this is the Britannia Works, so there's still the, uh, the gateway. Is still there. The, this Bedford Hospital has changed uh, dramatically. Some of, these, some of these bits are still there, some of the old walls, but uh, uh, the, the, all the modern bits are in this sort of area. And um, this is the Jew Drop Pub, Mongol. And um, this is the, um, anyone remember Aubrey from the Jew Drop? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was quite a character. <laughs> Bit racist. Yes, <laughs> so we're now back into town, um, Midland Road, uh, Homer Street sort of area. Lots of lost streets here. Um, got Greyfriars Walk, which was a very very narrow road. Um, only only really only really a passageway at the um, at the um, uh, Midland Road end. And uh, that was a walk which uh, the Greyfriars Priory was up towards uh, Bromham Road. And the, the monks apparently used to walk down to, there was a cross in the middle of what was Wells Street at the bottom. And they used to walk, it was the walk, they used to go down to this cross that was in the middle of the road. Uh, of course, that, that was all, that, that all changed uh, in the time of Henry VIII when the uh, monastery was dissolved. Um, we've got Gravel Lane, which is um, uh, on the titled photograph. And just off of Gravel Lane was uh, Gravel Lane wasn't considered to be one of the better areas of town, but uh, just off of there was uh, Tower Court and Tower Court Gardens, which were definitely uh, uh, fairly undesirable, um, very un un unsanitary by all by all accounts. There's a few little bits. Uh, Queen's Row 
uh, is actually, there's still a remnant of where that would have been. Um, it's uh, by Paddy Powers, uh, what used to be the, the back of um, um, back of British home stores. There's a little bit, which just goes back a little bit further off of All Hallows. And um, that, was called Queen, that was called Queen's Row. No, there's no houses left on it, of course. Uh, Christie's Court was again one of these courtyards that you went through, a, basically went through a small tunnel into it. Uh, it was considered to be the roughest uh, uh, street in town. Uh, even the police wouldn't go in there alone. They went in, uh, went in small groups. Um, Banford Court is completely gone, and that's actually where uh, Church Arcade is now, or roughly where Church Arcade is. Um, across the way, all, running almost parallel to where the, ar the other arcade is, was called Andrew's Court. And down off the high street, there was um, old, well called George Yard or Old George Yard. Um, that uh, actually went off the high street and then came up into, Sil into Silver Street as well. But the, the main bit of the yard was just there. And there's also the White Horse Pub, which was on the site of where Marks and Spencer's was on the corner, or was on the corner. Um, that also had um, tenements at the back that uh, people, it was originally stable in, but that, uh, pe people did actually live there. There's at least eight families lived in these uh, tenements at the back at one point. Loads of places have changed, and I'm not even including the bits around the bus station, right in the bus station area. Church Square has changed dramatically. James Street no longer has any of this place. James Street is the bit that's between what used to be Woolworths and British Home Stores. It's now between Next and whatever British Home Stores is going to be. As if there were houses on it, there's now nothing. Uh, there's not, it used to be able to, I remember it used to be able to get, there was a side entrance to go into Woolworths and into British, into British Home Stores. You can't even do that now. Um, Paradigm Court is still there. If you, if you look at the, uh, it was the service entrance, uh, or service uh, for goods deliveries for Marks and Spencers, but it's also for Iceland and Net and uh, for Poundland. If you look on the side of the side of Poundland, there was still a road sign saying Paradigm Court, but again, there were houses there no longer. House Court, not Halls Court, House Court across the way is behind what was Boots, the old Boots, and is now Clinton Cards. Uh, May's Yard um, run, used to run roughly along the side of what was the um, it was now the uh, Corn Exchange, and it goes under the Howard Rooms, yeah. are built over the top of it. And Castle Lane is still there, but uh, virtually none of the original houses are there, because uh, so they're all knocked down, built into a car park. And now there's a new uh, there's a, a new block of, uh, of buildings, and, and there's the restaurants on the other side. I'm not going to really go about the change names ones at the moment because I'm just going to try and get through the photographs. So, Greyfriars Walk. Um, the, the chimney was from uh, the Montana Maltins, which was part was originally part of uh, part of a brewery, a brewery uh, Phoenix Brewery, which then became part of Charlie Wells. But they had a their own uh, had a Maltins at the back, and this was the, the chimney for that. Um, it did, it widened out a little bit, but not much. Uh, uh, there is a car there, I can't imagine any cars getting down this bit, but, uh, and it did widen out even further, a bit higher up. Uh, my brother, actually, I didn't put that photograph in, my brother did actually find on um, what is now, is it now Royce Street? Mm. On Royce Street, on the, it's a, uh, like a sandwich bar type thing on the corner, opposite where the, um, uh, on the other side of the road from where Priory Terrace is. There is, painted on the wall, it's very difficult to read, Greyfriars Walk, because that was originally Greyfriars Walk. It must be the oldest street sign. It, it must predate all the metal ones. There are a few old metal ones, but this is actually uh, painted. There's a white background over some of it, and then it's painted in quite quaint, um, anti well, sorry, antiquated uh, lettering, Greyfriars Walk. You can just about make it out. Uh, Paul point, uh, my brother pointed it out and gave me a photograph, which I was going to put in at this point, but uh, I'm going to leave that for the next uh, for the next talk. 
Uh, Gravel Lane, this is the picture I used on the main one, and this is another one of the buildings there. Um, parts of the street were knocked down over the years, uh, a lot of the buildings were, were falling down in a uh, very perilous state, so they weren't, it wasn't all knocked down in one fell swoop, they were knocked down over, over a period of years. And this is a, a photograph from around about 1976-77, and this is Gravel Lane, what was left of it. The top end, this is the Beehive, which is now Tesco's, and this is what was then CNA, now Next. And it went sort of where the border is between the two shops. So that end had already gone, and there's just a tiny little bit there. River Street was being widened, but there was a big building in the end, in the way, which is the um, Salvation Army Citadel. And that was knocked down, and the new Salvation Army building built down there. This was the old Midville Club. Can we remember the Midville Club on Midland Road? And this was the site of Bedford Modern School. And the reason why there's a big pit there is that is where the uh, car park underneath the harbour centre was built. So it's a, a, a deeper layer uh, on that on that section. They're digging quite deep there. And there's the Empire Cinema up there. And this just shows. This is slightly older. Um, this is James. This is James Street. And this is Church Square here. This is the White Horse pub, which uh, eventually became um, Marks and Spencer's. This is the Empire. I'm going to just put this up just to show how densely packed yeah. all the streets were at that time. Um, this is Harbour Street, uh, the White Horse Inn, and this is the side view. And through this entrance here was um, what, so what was originally stabling, but there was quite a few families actually lived in their yard at the back. And this gives, this is it being knocked down in 1929 to make way for, um, for Marks and Spencers. This is Howells Court. Uh, again, this, is, this, this was at the back, this is at the back of, these were knocked down to make way for boots on the corner of uh, Arbor Street and Silver Street. And um, it's, House Court is still there, but uh, again, it's only used for access for deliveries and, uh, and goods uh, to, for the houses, uh, shops on Silver Street and some of the ones on Harbour Street. Um, this is Church Square, the original Church Square. Um, this is the side of Woolworths, and this is James Street. As if you couldn't actually go up James Street to Church, uh, Church Square because there's a great big wall in the way. It was actually, blo it was actually blocked off. Um, there was, originally would have been, uh, uh, before um, Woolworths was extended to this bit here, there was uh, there's rows of shops there, uh, rows of houses there. And I'll say this is, uh, this, where uh, Church Arcade or West Arcade would be somewhere here and where uh, the, the, the jewellers, Millman's, would be somewhere here as well. But uh, they're obviously completely different to, to what it is now. The stray dog wandering around. And this would have been Dane Street, uh, heading up to where the post office used to be, which is now just the alleyway. Paradigm Court, I say, this, one, this is Paradigm Court in the 1920s. Um, looks a bit rough. <coughs> That, uh, that was quite a long, quite a, a, quite a long windy court off of, off of Harper Street. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so it still exists, um, but it's, it's just the sides and backs of shops now. Um, and this is where Bamford Court was, uh, a little bit further, further up, and this is where um, Church Arcade, or, or what was originally West Arcade, is, is now. Well, this is Maze Yard, um, off of, um, off of um, uh, St Paul's Square, the north side of St Paul's Square. This is a, a drawing done around about uh, 1830, and these are Maltins. This and this were Maltins, where they, they made uh, Maltin uh, 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 stuff for the, <coughs> for the brewing industry. This is quite an atmospheric shot of, uh, this, is that, this photograph is just here, taken just here. Just by the side of this mountain, with a, a dray horse or a heavy horse uh, uh, coming out of uh, a shed around the corner, 
it was, a, it was a dead end, you couldn't get through. I mean, these days you can actually walk through at the back of the library and walk through up, up to Silver Street. But before, uh, Maze Court was a, was, a, was a dead end. And this is George Yard, or the old George Yard. This is on, uh, from the 1950s, in, um, on, on the High Street. Quite a grand entrance, really. And this all became, this is all knocked down to make way for extension to what was then EP Roses, and is now Debenhams. Uh, if you look through here, the, the actual Old George Inn was on this side, between this archway and that archway. And this is the arch, this is the original archway up this end. If you go around the back of um, uh, that, that little bit of uh, road now between um, uh, St Paul's Square and Silver Street, you can still see yes. some of some of the brickwork, uh, some of the stonework that um, it built into the back of Debenhams, but there's not much of it. Uh, it is some old stone, but you can't work out exactly what, what it belongs to. And this is quite an interesting one. This is on Silver Street. This is the, the Windsor Cafe. And that was a bit locked down and became the Windsor Pub. Mm -hmm. And this is the passageway that used to be, is now, is it Abbey National? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Halifax. Halifax. Halifax, Halifax, yeah. It's between Halifax and then the Costa Coffees on the other side. Mm -hmm. This actually go, used to go back and would join up with the, uh, the George Inn. Um, it, hasn't, it hasn't really ever had a name that I could uh, find out, but it was just basically uh, uh, another way to get to the George Inn. And this was the old George Inn in its heyday. Um, uh, played billiards, had stabling, there was room for the, uh, the cy cycles and motors could be stored. Um, and it was uh, an, old, an old coaching inn uh, originally. Um, so part, parts of it were almost certainly date back. 500 years or more, but so the only little bits that are left are on the outside, the other side of this archway, which was, uh, the archway's knocked down, there's actually a flat uh, beam along the top now, but there are some odd bits of stone there, and that's really all that's left of it. All of this is all underneath uh, Debenhams. And uh, we'll just do the very last little bit, uh, say, I'll go do this in this area in much more detail in, in a talk probably next March, you know, the first one for next year. Um, this is, shows all the streets of, uh, that were under the um, uh, bus station area. And this was a post-war plan that came out in the late 40s, early 50s. Uh, it was, virtually none of that was ever built, but it was some of it. There's, uh, there's going to be pedestrianised uh, shopping areas. There's going to be a bridge, another bridge across the river, which they've been talking about for 60 or 70 years. <laughs> and this is a plan, this is a little bit later, this is from the, uh, from the late 60s, early 70s, because um, a borough hall had already been built by then, and Kingsway uh, was actually built as an access road for a new river crossing. Uh, and Greyfriars and what's going to be the widening of River Street was going to be where it would actually go. So we go down King's Way, you would cross over through the town centre, up Greyfriars and join up uh, to, with um, Union Street and uh, out towards uh, to the A6 and Clapham Road. Uh, this is a little drawing from the, from the 1950s uh, showing uh, the new bridge and the proposed civic buildings and the, the proposed that they're going to have all sorts of buildings on the other side where the cattle guard, cattle market used to be. And this is a later, this is from the 1960s, again, the proposed new river bridge, but of course it's, it's never happened. Um, this is a, an old street map um, overlaid on top of uh, the bus station, uh, a satellite photograph of the bus station. Where you can see this is the multi story car park by the bus station, this is the bus station, and you can see where um, Greenhill Street, I don't know if anyone really notices, if you ever go along this bit, they're, they're doing lots of work there, and all this, there's loads of signs saying Green Mill Street, and it's, <laughs> um, it's, it's called Greenhill Street. And the other side of the bus station, Thurlow Street, was a, was a normal street with houses and things on, but now it's, uh, it's just a pedestrianised area uh, on the south side of the bus station. 
and most of Gwynne Street has completely disappeared. The middle section of Gwynne Street is, this is the bit where you catch the X5, the old bay, so in Gwynne Street you would have gone straight through the middle of that. And here's a photograph, again from uh, early 60s, um, flat's all been built, and look in quite pristine condition. There was no way to get to it from, from the Midland Roadway. Uh, all these streets were still being knocked down. And you'll notice that the, uh, uh, bus, uh, the uh, multi-storey car park was built in two parts. They did the eastern end first with the lifts, and then they built the second part later. The bus station is pretty well done, and uh, the, the new church square is pretty well done. But all of these bits here, uh, this is where Greyfriars would go up now. You just see that little circle there. That's the roundabout that's outside the bus station now. But it's not a, it's not a roundabout. It's just a little curve. And the final slide is uh, an old horse and cart with the, a half-built um, multi-story car park. Uh, just the, the lift bit and the eastern side. Here's a very early and um, uh, I don't know what time of day they took that, there's virtually no traffic, no people around. Uh, the old Safeway supermarket and uh, nothing uh, looks in pristine condition. I think it was taken fairly shortly after it was all built and, uh, and, uh, and grassed over. And down the bottom, again, this is uh, an early photograph from the early 60s. Uh, most of the bus station building is there. Uh, most of the bus station isn't. The uh, bus station is there now. And they're just starting to build the, uh, the second section of the, uh, the multi-story. And that is the end of my talk. Oh. But, <laughs> preparing one that is going to be more centred, just the town centre part of this, so that I, I've got loads of, far, loads of photographs of uh, bits being demolished, some of the old streets, old street scenes, um, but because I, I was including all the bits around the, around the centre, it really meant I, I, I knew that I wouldn't be able to struggle to fit all that in, so I uh, wonder the the next talk is David Fowler's on uh, J.P. White's uh, Pipe and Works and a couple of the uh, architects and designers who, uh, who work for them. Uh, the one after that, that's, that's in September. In October, in November, uh, I shall probably be doing a talk on, on cholera in Bedford. It's 170 years since the last outbreak of cholera. Uh, that was in uh, uh, October, November 18, 1849. So we'll be talking about not only that, but also how the sanitary conditions of Bedford changed over the years and how it, um, uh, because of things like um, cholera epidemics, they started uh, doing proper sewage systems and proper provision of, uh, of fresh drinking water that was safe to drink. So it will cover not just uh, the, the 170th anniversary of uh, an outbreak of cholera, it will do the lead up to that and also uh, decades afterwards when they actually started making everything uh, safer for, uh, as far as uh, health and hygiene were concerned. And then we normally have a break, we don't normally do one in January, we do them every two months. The next one in March will probably be the one I'll be doing on the, just similar to this, but just, uh, just the, the town centre and uh, particularly uh, stuff around the, uh, the, the flats and the, um, uh, the pedestrianised areas and, uh, the, uh, and the bus station. And that is it. <laughs> <laughs>